Hello, hello, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, this was kind of a spontaneous one. We just kind of dropped it on on you. Uh, we weren't sure if we were actually going to be able to make it today. So that's why we didn't quite announce it. But we have a very special guest, uh, a very part of the Gikoro family. Um, many of you will know him. Uh, he's a fantastic photographer based out of Colombia. Uh, he was here actually doing a workshop, which where we have been at all day. So today we are going to be asking some questions. We're going to be asking. Now we're going to do things a little bit different. Um, so we are going to be doing both English and Spanish uh, at some of the, you know, some of the things uh, in here. And then we will just play around with it uh, to figure out, you know, uh, so if you have English questions that you want to ask, please feel free. If you have Spanish questions, uh, same uh, same uh, as before, but I do want to introduce you all to, like I said, a very special uh, friend of the families, and that is a good Cristian Cardona. So, Cristian Welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, to the know. show. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Fine. Yeah. I'm kind of tired because of a long day, but long day happy today. To be, happy to be here with you, as that, always. So, and guess what, dude? Nobody heard you because I had you muted. So. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Sorry about that, man. Now, but, hello, and uh, I was telling you that um, yeah, a long day, uh, but. Happy to be here as always. Good man, that's fantastic. So, you came to you, you came to Dallas. Thank you for the visit and everything. You we had a workshop today. Yeah, um, and we're working like always, all day since uh, nine a.m. Since nine a.m. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was a long, uh, you know, strenuous one, but it's always fun, like always. So, um, you know, so here's here's one of the things that we're gonna do. Like I was telling everyone, we are going to be, you know doing english spanish so whichever one uh it is like i said it is kind of a surprise so i don't know how many viewers we're gonna get uh but you know if we get questions like i said guys if you want to have you know uh you know english or spanish ones you know don't hesitate to uh to send those send those over to us sorry having a little bit of a glitch uh here but we got it um again so Tell us a little bit about, about we're going to talk about your career, okay? Okay. We've known each other for a few years now. We met in Colombia. In 2013. Yeah, 2013. Actually. Yeah. 12? No, 2012. 2012, yeah. yeah. So 11 years, man. You, yeah, we, we've known each other for <laughs> a long time. Yeah, we've been known each other for a long time. So... Um, Dude, in 11 years, I've seen you grow so much. I've seen, you know, the, the, the talent that has come and gone between those years. Um, I'm one of those that, ha that has gone, you know, mm -hmm. but then, you know, you have uh, your career has been absolutely amazing. I mean, you not only are you, you know, an ambassador for us, but you're, you know, also an ambassador uh, for great friends of ours, which is Aftershoot, uh, Magmod and stuff like that. Um, so tell us a little bit about... You know, what is it that you talk a little for the people that don't know your your name, which I don't know who doesn't, but, you know, tell us a little bit about about your current work. What do you do? I know you do a lot of weddings. Uh, I know you do portraiture, but as well, you do a lot of what here in the U.S. are seniors. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, actually, it's a long time that I've been doing photography. Uh since 2001, uh, I start doing uh, photography for schools, uh, actually by accident. Uh, when I start doing photography, I was, uh, I, I'm a, a graphic designer, but I start doing uh, photography uh, because the products that I start doing for schools was actually yearbooks and uh, uh, photography pro products for the graduations and the uh, first communions. So that's, that, that put me in the in the in the position that I ha have to learn and start doing photography the right way not only in automatic with my camera so I start doing that on 2001 
um, doing the senior portraits for the, the photos that they have to put on the yearbooks on that on the, the time. That was a matter of time that some of these kids uh, start to go uh, outside the school and, and go to university or get, start getting married. So five, five, six years after I start doing this, they start calling me also for the weddings. But at that point, I that's what the point where I start uh, going to workshops and meeting uh, a lot of uh, photographers like you. And that's actually what I was telling today on the workshop that I always tell that uh, I was introduced to the real world of photography by people like you. At, at that point, you were doing weddings. Correct. You were going to Medellin in Colombia to do a workshop. And I don't have a clue of anyone on the industry, but uh, I see that you were doing a workshop. And another videographer that I was telling you today that, is, that was Christian Pinto. Christian Pinto, yeah. I thought that he was a, a photographer too. So I get into these workshops. Uh, I see first the, 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 the workshop of, of Christian. I was kind of mad because I was seeing a, 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 a workshop about video, not photography. So I, I knew that I screwed it up uh, that moment. So I was uh, kind of concerned because uh, I was not uh, informed about what type of things I want to I want to see in your workshop. Uh -huh. So I only see a photo of you. Uh, you rem I remember a lot of a photo of you that was made like on a long exposition uh, mm -hmm. with a lot of lights behind uh, the bride. Okay, like yeah, a, that's yeah. all the light the, the yeah. light trails. Light painting, like yeah, light, light painting. painting. Yeah. When I see that, for me, it was like uh, you know, like witchcraft, like uh, some <laughs> kind of <laughs> brujeria, uh -huh. <laughs> if we will say. Uh, in Spanish. So I see that and I, 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 I can't even imagine how you can do that. So I, th that was the thing, that photo, I always remember that photo because that was the photo that, that tell me I have to go to see what this guy do with the speed lights. Uh -huh. And I, I remember that you were one of the first that was using speed lights and not like that big, uh, big strobes, big strobes uh -huh. and all that. So you were like uh, one of the first that I see that, uh, that was using more portable Lighting. type of lights. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of new for me in every, in every single way. So I go to your workshop and effectively you blow my mind in that moment and I was uh, like, start to see so, or seeking uh, uh, similar type of photographers that, that do the things that you do, like uh, the Chris Mans and that point, uh, Daniel Aguilar, that have like a more, I will say, like a more uh, dramatic type of style of, uh -huh. of, of, of photograph. Not only using flashes, but uh, with natural light, natural and light, and and with flashes, but in a, in a more dramatic and colorful way of of doing photos, I was amazed of doing that. So I start searching for all these uh, workshops. I uh, I go to the Christmas at uh, Oakland at that time in mm -hmm. in, in uh, California. In California. Yeah. Uh, I go to the Tumans uh, workshop that was recent, uh, more recent times. Um, what else? Daniel Aguilar, Fer Juaristi, all, all that photographers that inspire me so much yeah. so I started doing that for a long time I was actually thinking to do a, um, a postgraduate uh, studies on I don't know uh, business management or whatever but I saw that that was not the thing that I that I want and when I start doing weddings I get in love on, in this and, and start studying a lot and here I am uh, 15 years 15 later 15 years later we it. yeah, <laughs> which is yeah, which is awesome. And and the one thing, the one thing that 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 I absolutely you know love, and something that you always talk about, you know, is is the fact that you know you always are always still even hungry to learn more, to understand, to what's what's out there, and that's something that you always tell also your 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 students when they go to your workshops, you know, to continue learning, to continue being hungry and stuff like that, which is. Very admirable for the most part. A lot of photographers, they get to a point where, oh, they don't want, you know, oh, I, I already know, know everything. That. I know yeah. this and I know that. Um, and I think that's that's the time where, where you know, we kind of get lost within ourselves, you know, as photographers where that that, that artistic growth kind of gets, gets stuck uh, to the point. And, and I agree with you. I think, you know, being able to, to, to learn um, even if you use flash and you want to learn from somebody who doesn't, you know, exactly. and stuff like that, there's always something, you know, uh, keeping those like creative juices all the, you know, all, all of the time kind of flowing and stuff like that. 
Um, cause you, you went to the foundation workshops too, right? Yeah. And I think that was a great breaking point for me. Uh, at that point I was searching a lot of, I will say fearless photographers type of photographers. So I was kind of confusing the type of pho photography that I want to really do. At that point I was trying to do more, uh, document, uh, documentary type of, of photography. Uh, but I was kind of blind in that moment, seeing that my real strength was the, to do portraits. I was doing portraits for more than 10 years at that point. And that was the point where I was doing my best type of photos. But I was trying to force myself to do a different type of photos, like the, the ones that I see in, 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 this, um, in this blog, in this page. So when I meet we from Fearless, uh, he told me uh, about the workshop, but I really don't understand uh, how deep uh, the whole can go in that. Um, I go to Mexico to do the last, actually the last one that they, they do on Latin America. Um, and that was a great experience because uh, it's, uh, we, we told him actually this, we, we actually see that workshop as a not photography workshop. Actually it's more uh, a workshop where you find yourself as a photographer, like what type of photographer you can be. And it's in a real hard way, they teach you that. Yeah. <laughs> so with are four days of, of, of really hard work and try to sh show you your real potential as a, as a photographer. So after that, I really understand what I want to do as a photographer. Before that, I really was trying to copy a, lo a lot of my, uh, all the photographers that I admire. Uh, since that, I really feel like a, a real breaking point. Uh, but it uh, was real hard. Uh, after that, I was actually thinking of quitting <laughs> photography and all after, that. After yeah, going was, through... Yeah, because I, I, I was frustrated that I was not the type of photographer that I was thinking mm -hmm. I was going to be. And actually, uh, I, uh, in a couple of weeks, I start to understand that the real... F uh, all, all, uh, all, uh, all about that workshop is about to see yourself mm. what you are able to do with the way you do your photos not the way that others do the photos exactly and, and yeah and i learned a lot in that days and for for the for the people that that aren't familiar or newer to the uh fearless uh we win which is you know amazing photographer he lived he lives now in washington if i'm not mistaken uh, but he he was he used to live here in dallas he was part of our dallas I don't community know that. yeah he used to live here in in dallas community he was part of a really great group of photographers that were called F8, uh, I believe. Um, but yeah, he, he used to live here and he started, he started uh, basically a movement yeah. uh, in, the, in the industry, which was- You can call that way. Yeah, yeah actually, it, it yeah. was, it was, it was a movement um, of a more, um, in my opinion, I think they were the kind of the pioneers of the photojournalistic style- On weddings. Of, on weddings. Yeah, right. And when it came to it, because the majority, we himself was, I mean, was a photojournalist, you know, he yeah. and stuff. So, um, so yeah, it was a group of of of, of, uh, of photographers, you know, headed by by uh, by we um, that kind of started a revolution, and and they're still part of it. They still have the f the fearless competitions. Um, I don't think they do the the the. The foundation, the foundation ones yeah, anymore, they, right? Actually, oh, you know this what? Year they do. Yeah, exactly. I think. I think. Um, and here in Texas, actually, uh, Tyler uh, working. Yep. I think Tyler took it over. And, and I, I think, think he's the one that, ben, that brought it back. Ben Chrisman was also on was part again. of it. Okay. Yeah. So so yeah, and, and I guess it's something that uh, that that I think it's great. Like I said, you know, it's something very different, you know, and stuff like that. So definitely, you know, you guys. Um, if you're interested, um, uh, I know they're still up. They're, they're still doing it because you're right. Uh, uh, Tyler did start bringing it back. Yeah. Or for my friends in Argentina, El Tiller. El Tiller. El Tiller. <laughs> uh, we have many stories from when we were in Argentina uh, uh, with that. But yeah, so that was that. That's awesome. That's that's great. I think I think. Uh, you know, you being part of that was 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 cool. I didn't know that it had affected you that much, though. Yeah, I so was that's actually that's pretty think cool. that I was gonna find a way to be a more documentary type of photographer. And actually, I the thing that I learned is all the things that I really not good at. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to to see to see that because yeah. it's frustrate. It's a lot of you frustrate a lot because you feel that you're not as good as you think you can be. But actually, you see what you are good at, 
but you have and to those. embrace that and understand it and yeah. and start to do the things that you really know how to how to do and and that change a larger world because you start to work the way you know how and not the way you you want to show others and that changed a lot the way you 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 do your photos so that was a, a great experience i always I always talk the best I can of that experience because that was a breaking point in my career. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's 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 awesome. So, and I think we actually have some images. So we're gonna we'll discuss some of your images, you know, that from from your work and stuff like that. Now, outside of that, what what made you want to start teaching? You know, what what was what was the, the point where you were like, you know, I want to start sharing. You know stuff like that. Were you just being asked? Did, did, was it just uh, naturally something that you wanted to do, or what, how? I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Uh, a lot of persons start to ask me uh, if I want to do some workshops or some one to ones or something like that. But uh, actually, one of the first things that I I start to think about doing a, a workshop is because um, I I will. At least I do 30 or 40 workshops on that time. I do a lot, like 10 per year, something like that. I was obsessed in going and learn about all the that great gurus of the industry and all that person that you admire so much. But in all that way, as I see really good workshops, I also see a really bad ones. Of course, I'm not gonna say names of anyone. Uh, but the experience in some ones are were were so bad and so frustrating that I start to thinking about how I will like to do a workshop if I go and and have the chance to mix it the way I want. And on that way of thinking, I start I start to think about my own workshop and how I will do my own. Uh, so it was a matter of time when I, someone asked me if I do it, and okay, I will do it, but I want to do it my way. Not a copy or a mix of a, of a lot of workshops. No, uh -huh. I want to do the way I want it. Uh, and I have a lot of lucky because I have a lot of friends that are really good as teachers. Uh, my wife is a teacher, so uh, the way I, I, I build it was based on, on, on real educators and not about only teaching or um, uh, only technical aspects or the uh, trying to be a, like a ego ego way of, of, of doing a, a show about Cristian mm -hmm. Cardona no nothing like that so it was more based on experience and more based about uh, you have to go and, and and confront your own your own problems of, as a photographer go and deal with that so that was the way I started because that was more like uh, I, I do it the way I see I think a workshop can be can be done cool and Five six years later, uh, I'm here <laughs> at Dallas doing one one more. And you, because you've done, you've done a couple of, of of you've done two other ones, or you've been here in in, in oh, Dallas yes. and in Ensenada in Mexico. And, okay, um, yeah. So that that's you know that, that that's awesome. Okay, so we talked a little bit about you know like, kind of like how you got kind of got started. In career. Um, you said you've been doing schools for for a while now. Yeah, Twenty. So, more so years. what is what is, for example, what is the most challenging part in balancing those two? Because those are two very different uh, kind of aspects of it. Um, yeah, in some ways. Yeah. So, what you know, what are the similarities, and also like what is what is uh, the challenges that you encounter on doing, let's say, for example. The, like school, because all those are portraiture, obviously. Yeah. And then, you know, changing basically everything. Like, do you have to change your mentality to go from one to the other? Like, how do you approach that? Actually, uh, when I told you about that breaking point, actually, I was telling you that I was trying to be a more a documentary type of, of wedding photographer. Uh, and my training uh, as a photographer was as a portraiture uh, photographer. So, um, at schools, I have to do like 30 to 40 portraits per day. Each one of the kids that go uh, have an idea that I have to develop in 10 minutes with them and do the idea that they want in the time that I have available with them. So uh, when I go to, to the weddings, actually, I don't feel uh, something different because actually in a wedding, 
basically you have to go and, and solve a problem once at, at a time. You have a problem here, you have a problem there, uh, you have problem with the time, you have problem with the weather, with the people. It's exactly the same thing that I have to deal every single day in a school. So actually, the first time, as, as I told you, I was very confused because I was trying to, to do more to document uh, to do more documentary type of photos. But that was a big problem for me because I was not trained for that. I was not able to see the photos that I want to do. But, but when I start doing the photos the way I know it, that is basically do one portrait at a time, uh, my photography uh, changed completely because I start doing the things that I do normally from Monday to Friday. Uh, and I was trying to force myself to do something that I was not trained of. Uh -huh. So that's what the point where my photography changed because I was not, what's, I was not trying to, do, uh, um, to, to tell a story in my photos. I was trying to do a good portrait one at a time. And when I start doing that, uh, that was the moment that I feel that my photography changed and the people start to recognize my work as the way I know to do it. But that's only the only way to, to understand that is to, to learn that I was not good in something, not not the other way. So that was the that, that was I I was not so frustrated when I was start doing weddings because I was only doing the, the, the things that I already know to do in schools. Yeah. And I apologize, you guys. We're having a little bit of, of, of problems with the with the camera thing, so I apologize. The last time you guys were looking at me, uh, stuff like that. But you know, uh, I think we got to figure it out. Um, so we got Justin from After She actually logged in, and he says, you know, you have a beautiful shirt on. Which oh I, yeah, I, a really cool one. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> it's the unicorn, man. It's the unicorn. That's that's the one thing that, that everybody will recognize. <laughs> so that's that's interesting. So. When, whenever you start, you know, like, like you were saying, you know, that was kind of like, like a kind of breaking point when it came. So in case you guys haven't seen, uh, some of the, some of the images, uh, of, of, of Christian of, you know, for, for the school, they're not your typical, like here in the U S you know, we have the annuals, you know, we have a big, large company that's called Life Touch. Life Touch, and yeah. uh, there's another one. Yeah, there's a, there's another one though. That's huge too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's basically the, yeah. the, the the two primary companies, but I can't remember what the other one the other is. Other name, yeah. Um, so you, yeah. So you have you have Life Touch, um, you know, which is and the what reason I know that one is because when I was growing up, that's the one that did it, and then my kids currently they're doing through yeah. Life Touch and stuff like that. Um, but yours is not like that. I mean, you know, no. on this one, you have these backdrops, and you know, we're <laughs> as good as you're going to get, you know, especially being a kid. But the majority of yours, I mean, you, you really kind of blend in, you know, the personality of each student into everything that they do. So I, you know, if you guys want to go to your Instagram, you have a lot of, you know, you have quite a few of them on your yeah, Instagram uh, and stuff like that. Go check them out. They're in my opinion, I'm, I even show them up to, you know, to photographers that are senior portraits, that do senior portraits here. And I tell them, I'm like, no, man, this is not like, I was like, these are like school pictures. So how, how do you manage that? Like, how to, do you manage to get these kids' personalities? Like, do you have, like, how much time do you have with each kid? <laughs> there was, that's, that's a common question uh, about that, that type of photos. Um, I actually have 10 minutes per kid. Um, the way I do it is that I have to do a few meetings with the, all these kids and, and try to show them why, it, why I expect they have to prepare for the day of the photo. Um, so I, I show them photos of other schools. I show them what I expect about them, uh, what I want them to show. Uh, I also tell them try not to follow trends that you that you find on Pinterest or in Instagram. Uh, try to do something that show your personality, the way you are. If you love uh, to ride bike uh, or ride horses or love the books of Harry Potter or uh, do ballet or whatever you would like to do, try to show it on a photo. So I tell them, imagine how you would like to to be seen in a photo. Like imagine how you imagine a photo and try to show me that before we go and do the photos. So that's the first meeting. The second meeting, they send me like ideas that I found on, on Insta Instagram, of course, and Pinterest. But I try to, to move a little bit more to our, uh, our own idea. 
So they t I told them, okay, bring this for the photo, uh, prepare this, try to find on the school these type of spots, uh, try to prepare everything because I'm gonna be right on time on the moment I told you uh, and be ready with all the stuff that you want for the photo. And when you're ready, I'm gonna go and do the photo. So each kid have 10 minutes. Now, this is not a uh, huge, complete session of them. It's just, mm. we're trying to do one photo. Mm. We took 10, 30, 50 photos, but searching just for one. That so, is the one that goes on the yearbook. Yeah, that, yeah. so uh, you, what you were saying, you, you talk to these kids, like, do, do they know ahead of time? Like, do you send the school, hey, this is what the kids should should do for it, or do you have 10 minutes? I mean, because some of the ones that you that, that I've seen, for example, like this one uh, of this kid, you know, this kid who's who's playing the drums. Oh yeah. You know, so you have you know this kid playing the drums. Obviously, he knew he want he wanted to bring that. Yeah. So do you tell them these ahead of time? You know how how much ahead how much time do they have to? Oh, normally to get they they have like one hour for preparing their photo, but I have only ten minutes off with shooting. with them. Yeah. Okay. So. They come with the idea days before. Mm -hmm. uh, I give them some advice or prepare this, bring this, uh, find this type of sp space, uh, try to bring some, uh, I don't know, a background, uh, try to bring water, try to bring that uh, special type of, of, of dress that mm -hmm. will work better if you are, don't bring black with a black uh, background, okay, or yeah. something like that, you know? Uh, so they have to prepare that and their their responsibility to, br to bring that. but. Of, of course, not all the kids do their homework. Yeah. So uh, most of them do do it, but the ones that, that prepare it well, uh, they have like 40, 50 minutes for preparing all that. For example, the, the, the photo that you're talking about, the, mm -hmm. the battery, the battery, yeah. The, the drums. The drums. The sorry. drums. The drums. Uh, so this kid uh, was like one hour and a half before bringing all the, all the drums, uh, preparing the, the background, uh, he bring that was actually not water on that photo. That was uh, powder. Uh, so like, like, was it like 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 holy like you know? arena? Uh, that was we what? Uh, yeah, arena. I was uh -huh. I, I don't know the name on on, on English, but uh -huh. they bring a few bags of, of that. But uh, but like o sea, like like flour, o sea, arena, arina flour. and polvo, yeah, flour. O sea, blanca. Right. Yeah. And so, so then the colors come from the gels. I'm assuming from the gels. Okay. And the, and, the, and actually that photo was. In, uh, the, the the final one uh -huh. was only the first shot that we only do like four shots because you can imagine how this kid was at the second shot yeah if all that powder come over over it over him so uh we were we prepared a lot uh we put uh flashes inside the drums behind him over him uh just to be super sure that uh, the one the one moment that he kicked the the drums all the, the powder, powder would fly. Yeah. But we know that he is gonna be messed up Covered the in. second one. So yeah. we had, we tried to do it the first one, and we were lucky enough that uh, everything was set it up the way that we respect. And mm. in, one in one shot, shot. we do we do the photo. Like, awesome. Yeah, because uh, when when I first when I first when I first saw it, I thought it was it was it was like holy powder. You know the like in, you know in in uh, in um, uh, like on. Holy, which is like Indian, like the Indian oh, the color okay. powders. No, 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 no. They, well, yeah, that's yeah, that's they what use I it originally. A lot, but no, actually, the colors are but, uh, because of the yeah, so because the of gels. the gels, that yeah. which makes make, makes perfect sense. Uh, with okay, so, so that's 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 kind of mind blowing that you basically in an hour you get you know this, that, which is awesome. You know, it's that's one of the things. Now, um. With weddings, obviously, your approach on weddings is is a little bit different. So we're gonna switch gears a little bit, um, and the, a lot of your of your wedding um, imagery and stuff like that. Um, you know, how is your approach? And the majority of your weddings, they're not in Colombia. Oh, they're well, not. More than in Colombia, it's more like it, uh, outside my city. Okay. I work a lot in the north part of Colombia. In okay. Cartagena is a, a tropical city, a old colonial city on the north part of Colombia, at Barranquilla, and yeah, and a lot of weddings outside the, the country. But most of them are in Cartagena. That I live okay. in Bogota, so most of them are outside my city. Outside, outside of the city, but yeah. but are the majority of your clientele f like like Colombian couples? Oh, it's a mix. Yeah. It's, uh, Normally, it's a Colombian bride with um, 
some guy from the States or mm. Mexicans, uh, people from uh, Europe, but most of them are, some, some of, of the two are mm. from another country. Okay. Um, yeah, so let, um, do you have do you have a lot of weddings or do you have you usually have weddings outside of, of the country? Uh, I would say uh, a 20% of my weddings. 20% outside yeah. of the country. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. The majority, when I used to shoot, you know, the majority of, 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 uh, of my weddings were actually outside of, of the Dallas area. I traveled quite a bit for, for the majority of them. Um, but again, you know, since then, um, you know, things have changed, so I don't shoot as much uh, now. But from a working, you know, standpoint, <laughs> from a working photographer like yourself, like, you know, how do you prepare? Because um, obviously you take a lot of lights. We all, you know, we see a lot of your images, obviously, stuff like that. Like, how do you prepare? Uh, how much equipment do you usually take with you? I know you travel a lot. We've discussed yeah. this. We've talked about it. So you're constantly traveling. Um, what is your usual, like, shoot kit? Well, you that know, consists of. That is something that I basically change uh, all the time. I always try to bring as as, as less gear as I can mm -hmm. uh, for obvious reasons of uh, the space on the on the airplane uh, and all the fees that the, they charge you for more baggage and all that. But uh, I will say that my basic uh, gear will be three flashes, two cameras, four lenses. And the lenses will, will be uh, 28, 70. I, I shoot with Canon. Mm -hmm. So 28, 70, uh, 2.0. Um, I actually use it more that that uh, the, the, that is the, the lens that I use more. But I'm... The, 20, the 24 to 70. The 28. 28, 28 to 70. 28 okay. 70. Uh, I'm use... I will say the second one that I use more is the 15, 35. Uh, the 85, I use it just on the session when I have a space or, in, on, a, or on a big uh, church. And the 50, I will say this is the other, the other lens that I use a lot. So, yeah, I would say that that is my gear. Um, uh, modifiers, I, as, you, as you said, I use Magmod. Uh, a lot. I use, the, I use sub boxes. Um, and that will be everything yeah yeah but that is enough for a big bag <laughs> so, yeah no absolutely yeah, Absol so, uh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. but that will be the the gear that i bring but uh, most of the time i'm using one and 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 a second one just for a feel uh, in some way color or um, um, a background light or uh, or a um, luz de recorte yeah uh, uh will set like will, a kicker, a kicker. yeah yeah yeah, uh, the third one it will be more for uh, for uh, creative purposes. Like uh, I need a flare, I need uh, something that gives me um, uh, some some kind of different color on the background, uh, more more like that. But normally it will be one or two flashes that I use permanently on a, on a wedding. So we got one question from Justin. Uh, it says, uh, "As such an amazing photographer, what goes through your mind when you start a process?" So there's it's. It's a two-part question. So, you know, when you, when you, what goes through your mind when you start your due process of, I'm assuming, you know, the, your shooting process? Uh, I will also break that in two parts. It will depend first on the part of the wedding that I am. Uh, if I'm, if I have time, uh, I will try first to do the safe shots. Like first do the, the go and do your homework. Mm. And then have the enough time to go and play a little bit. So... One of the things that I always try to do, and I told this a lot to my students, is to, to surprise your client with something that they don't expect. Uh, this is not uh, searching something about the story or that you were telling. No, you want to surprise your client with something that they don't expect to see. So that's kind of fun, the fun part of using the gels and all the, all the, all the flashes because that give you things that they don't see. That is really difficult to see if you don't see it, uh, build it on uh, with, the, with the flashes. So that's the way you 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 buy like the uh, confidence, la confianza mm -hmm. of your client, showing them the things that you can you are able to do. Uh, that's the only thing that I try to do at the first at the first time, just to surprise them. 
Uh, but then I tried to to get a little bit more of punch on, on, on the images, like get more attention on the subject. So one of the things that I try with my colors and all a lot of the stuff that I try to put is not just decorating the photos. It's more like uh, giving more attention to, to the subject, to the things that are happening all around the, the couple, uh, and give them photos that they normally don't see with their phones or with the photos that the guests uh, give. So my objective, my objective most of the time is to surprise my client, but also to give them photos that they know that they don't gonna have with any other people that is gonna be on the wedding. So, it, so, so it, like the guests, because we all have that. Exactly, and we're fighting Uncle with that. Bob. We have to deal with that because yeah. everyone now is a photographer. Everyone have a photo uh, at and, and in 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 and in an instant it, that's also published. So there is not a surprise for anyone. So you have to bring that photo that is a real surprise, and it have to be in a different level than the photos that they have everyone. So uh, maybe and for a second part, yeah, more the process that I try to to follow is more to to give an order of the things that I'm that I'm doing uh, what I what I mean with this is I try not to after I surprise my client I start to think how I can get more things that I have to put inside the story that I have to tell so I try not to do a simple photo of rings or shoes mm -hmm. I want to 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 uh, potenciar the image that that I'm that I'm doing for them So if they have uh, nice shoes, I want to show them the better I can, like a ad campaign of uh, Jimmy Choo or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So I not, I just not want a simple photo. I just want something that they can have with, with their own phones or with the, their own possibilities. Mm -hmm. So I'm that's what I'm trying to think all the time, like all the time. giving them surprises. So and then you know he follows it up. He says, and I think you you. Uh You talked about kind of like what triggers it, you know. So you saw, you see the shoes, so you want to get something like that. And then uh, the last part of the question says, "Do you walk into a session with an idea, no. or is it like a blank?" One of the things that I always discussed, you know, from the beginning, and even you know when we first met, one thing that I said was that to me, every couple, every wedding was a blank canvas. Yeah, I didn't walk in with what no I did. Expectation. Yeah, with or, or you know, or or with the idea of what I did. With uh, you know, you know, John and Jamie's wedding that you know the week before, you know, every time that I went in, it was something new, something. Um, like, do you so do you walk it with an idea uh, to to a wedding, or is it is it something that that you? Well, it will depend. Uh, I talk a lot with my clients. I okay. try to to know what they expect, what they want, and I try to give them the photos that they expect. But I don't prepare nothing for that. I basically know that, for example, they love their dogs. They want to walk with them on the photos. Uh, they love some colors. They have some special uh, uh, things about the, the, them that, that, that they want to see on the photos. They like uh, black and white, or they don't like black and white. They don't like to uh, kiss on the photos. Something, stuff that you know that you have to do or not to do. Uh, basically, it's more important for me to know what they don't want me to do. And based on that, I start working. But I don't have like a script for, for this. I just uh, try to be surprised by the moment, the places, the attitude that they have. And based on the things that I already know about them, try to put that on the photos, but not in a way that, okay, we are now do this photo that we find on Pinterest or in Instagram because they, we want that. No. We don't do that. Do It's you actually impossible to do that? I, I, which and I agree. Do you, for example, now now in the in the time of Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, and all the trends that are coming up, um, do you duplicate photos that, for example, that a customer sends you? You know, a client that says, "Oh, hey, you know, I saw this on Pinterest. Can we do this photo?" Uh, actually, it's, that's what I do in schools. Okay. You know, all the kids bring an idea com coming from another photographer, but uh, we never do the same photo. We're we're based on ideas that they have, uh, and we try to do our own approach of the of version that idea. Both but of that. Basically, it's not no one of no no one of the, that ideas that I do for schools are for me. Uh, some I, I I what I try to do is to mix all that uh, the way I know to do it. Or sometimes I actually say these kids or my couples. No, I think this is not going to work, but we can do something similar or we can do something based on that. Uh, 
And I think that is not uh, a bad idea, actually. Mm -hmm. You are there for for making them have a good time and yeah. and receive and, and and take the photos that they want to receive. So, if you get that from them, they're gonna be sometimes as as frustrated or they're not feel uh, good about your work. So I try to be uh, have a balance and all that. But of course, I try to be I, I try to do some things that I already see in in other in other places. But but first, I want to I want to see how how can I do my own approach about that. Actually, on the workshop, I show them a photo that I do based on an idea of Juan Ewan, uh, mm. a photo that I see that he do like 12 years ago. I love that photo since mm. I, I see it. And once in Cartagena, I see, a, you know, like a wine, um, what does the word for cava? Like a, like a, a space where they um, brought some wine on a, on a, on a like on a deck on a, on a restaurant. And the, the, um, the oh. ceiling... The ceiling was kind of a curve. Yeah. So, um, what was I, the name for that? Una cava de vinos. Sí. Yeah, but I don't know the English. Cellar. Wine cellar. Okay. But the roof was uh, like a like a big curve. So when I see that, I was trying to complete the circle with the reflection. But at, at that point, I was honestly, honestly not mm -hmm. thinking about the photo of, of, of Juan. Of Juan, yeah. Later, I see the photo and, okay, what... I, I think I already see this photo in another place. When I go and check, uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, Juan do this type of a similar photo, uh, but it's n not even close. Yeah. But I actually sent the photo to Juan and, hey man, this is inspired by you. Yeah. And he was <laughs> was telling me like I make it, he was making jokes about that. Yeah. Which is and and Juan and Juan he's a photographer from based out of Cancun, right? Uh, Rivera Maya. Uh, oh, Rivera, okay. yeah, the yeah. Rivera Maya. Um, a great, another great yeah, photographer. Nice. You know, he, yeah. yeah, he does. He does fantastic work. I've you know, um, we've known him for for a very long time as well. You know, and stuff like that. So, that, that, that's that's great. That's that. It's it's great to to hear. You know, a photographer. You know, like yourself, and just photographers in general. That you know, to get inspiration from other photographers is not a bad thing. No. You know, um, as a matter of fact, one of the, my favorite books that I recommend all the time, it's a tiny little book. It's a really quick read. Um, and it's called Still Like an Artist. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah fantastic, fantastic little book. And it, it talks about that. It talks about getting inspiration from, you know, from, from Any different source. things yeah. uh, and stuff like that. But also crediting that inspiration where you get it. You know, um, I think the wrong part is when when photographers end up trying to take credit for something that they got inspired from and then try to claim it as their own. Yeah, be, you know? and, 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 and tell that it's your idea and, and it's an original idea. Exa that, exactly. That's the thing that is not wrong. Yeah. That is wrong, sorry. That, yeah, um, but, you know, getting inspiration and, and, and using that to create something something new, it's something that, I mean, artists have been doing it for, you All know, time. thousands of years, you know? Nice. I mean... I'm pretty sure there was a caveman one day that saw something and then went yeah. over and started doing something else. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it's part, you know, it's it, it's it's part of it. So, with um, you know, with with uh, with the inspiration part of of uh, of, of that aspect, or um, I I used to get asked a lot. I was like, hey, does it upset you when somebody duplicates one of your photos or whatever? You know, I mean, I'll answer the question in a minute, but I want to hear your answer. Um, like, how do you feel when somebody, when you see, you know, uh, an, an image that it's a straight, re you know, replication of one of your images? I mean, do you take that as, as, as you know, oh, well, that, that's kind of cool, you know, that yeah. I inspire that? Um, like, what is, what are your feelings? In, 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 in I think that, I think that it's a compliment. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on the way they do it, uh, if they basically said start saying that it's an original idea, that uh, that are basically uh, inventing something that is already done, I think there is not an ethical way of, of approaching. It. And I think people see that and yeah. feel like oh, that's not true or that's wrong. But at the when I started doing workshops, that was kind of hard to, to see that my students were starting to do great photos and better photos. And it was kind of a pain process that you have to understand that if mm. you're teaching, 
you have to understand that you're giving that to another, to another person mm -hmm. and they, they're going to start doing the same things and doing the way they like to and, and start seeing things that you will love to do if you have the ideas they have yeah. at that moment. So uh, now I understand that it's part of the process and that is a compliment more than anything else yeah. and that people said that, oh, that photo is imp inspiring the way Christian do a photo is for me a huge compliment. Yeah. Uh, but if they start to to embrace that as their own, uh, it's kind of feel weird. But I know that at the end they are the only ones that are like kicking themselves. Yeah, like it's not it's not logic, but okay. Yeah, it's, it's it's the way they do it. Yeah, and and that's I think that's one of the I think one maybe one of the 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 harder points of of being a, a teacher, you know, and stuff like that. Because I remember I used to, you know, I used to get asked all the time. I was like, hey, you know, so so-and-so is, you know, replicated one of your images or whatever. It has never bothered me. Like, I've always felt, like I said, I think, you know, it's 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 an honor when they do, when they do that. Um, especially, like you were saying, you know, when they start doing great stuff, you know, based on the stuff that, that you know, they, that they learned that you were able to put that little grain of, you know, in, in, in their mind. Yeah. And they create something... Um, it, it's a great as as a mentor, as someone you, that that you share and you truly share, and I think that's the biggest difference between you know people that teach and people that mentor. You know, I always try to be uh, as much of a mentor as I could. You know, I was never, you know, I always I shared it, put it out there, and let let it go. Sometimes you just gotta put it out in the universe, you know, and things thing you know thing, things grow and stuff like that, which is fantastic. Because the universe kind of gives us, you know, great artists like yourself. You know, I mean, I remember, I remember when you by mistake went into my classroom <laughs> when we were in Colombia. You know, <laughs> yeah. And then later on, when when people were like, "Hey, you know, Christian," I was like, "Man, I I I know Christian." I was like, you know, and and to see that stuff, you know, and I could see, I could see the stuff that. You know that I saw from from when you learned you know little things that I would I would they would see you pick up from Fer and from Daniel, you know and 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 I did see a big grow after the foundation, I really did. And foundations really doesn't do much of lighting. I mean, well, not of off camera no lighting. lighting. Yeah. No lighting. Exactly. Um, but also your approach to it was very. I don't know. It was it, it was great. So. Those are the great things about being able to share, you know, and with 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 people, and you know, having them continue, you know, um, on that path of, of of being able to, you know, to create, you know, you know, stuff that like you currently create and better. You know, I was, I was really happy a few days ago. Uh, two photographers, one from Colombia and actually one from Peru, ride me, uh, and told me about how important it was to to be part of my workshop and how that changed their work and now how their career changed about simple things that I teach them. So I never thought that uh, that, uh, that what the things that you do have uh, that level of impact on, on, the, on the work and the, and the life of people. So I was really happy of, of, of reading that and to hear that they that they really enjoy the things that I teach them and that they were doing super super great photos uh, far away than, than than mine but I was like kind of I feel like a you know like a dad like a proud dad <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. you know oh that my kid uh, so I really I really was. Uh, Touched by that message, messages that was sent to me like two or three weeks ago, and I was not expecting that. Like they just write me like a spontaneous way, like telling me, "Hey man, I have to tell you this. Um, I, I I'm been booking a lot of weddings this year because of this and that, and people are seeing uh, my new photos and they really like them, and so I really appreciate this." Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I was really touched and like three days later another one told me that like I was not even asking them nothing they mm -hmm. just write me to, to say hey thank you man and it was really really important for me that so uh, that was telling me that okay I, I think I'm doing the, the things in the right way and all this effort of these years and yeah. building all these workshops and the way I tried to teach them 
is given the results that I finally want to see in my students. On the group that I have uh, of students, I, they publish uh, photos of that they're, they're doing and they're doing great work. Uh, so yeah, I feel like a proud, uh, like a proud dad right, with proud, my yeah. students. No, and it's and it's and it's a great it's a great feeling, um, and which is a, a great segue to to what I was gonna follow up with. You know, it's it's always great to to find inspiration. Obviously, you know, you inspire people that come in and stuff like that. What inspires you? I mean, it, it, do you still have those photographers that you say, um, you know, man, I was like I, they, this guy they didn't. You know, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit. We've talked about it, you know, when when Sean Lada was here, we talked about it with Esteban Key uh, as well. Um, like, are there photographers out there that, that, that inspire you? A lot. Yeah? Yeah. Esteban, for example. Yeah. And I always tell the, this guy, man, how you do it? Yeah. Like, uh, we're not, we're, I'm, we're not going to tell him that because he, he already has <laughs> yeah, a big head, you know. But so, <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but no, that no. time I, I meet him on on uh, on actually on, on on Texas last uh, two years ago, uh, I take his workshop. Uh, I fully take it. Like I was not a part of the. I was part of the staff of the of the of that uh, uh, workshop. Mm -hmm. But I take the full workshop and I was super interested in what he was doing and I was super amazed. I was like taking a, lo a lot of new ideas that I don't even think about doing and he works super simple. It's like Very not, simple, yeah. He don't use half of the gear that I use, but he do amazing stuff with basic stuff. So I was really amazed about what he do. Uh, Chris Knight uh, is another great photographer uh -huh. that uh, that I was, I, I'm being following, following this guy since a long time. I'm dying to go to a workshop of this guy. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of good photographers yeah. everywhere. But are, are, the, the, are the majority of, are they are they wedding photographers? Do you, mm, I mean. Chris, no. Chris, Chris, is, yeah, Chris, Chris, yeah, Chris, Chris is, does, does a lot of portrait. Like he has all, uh, all this stuff about cinematic lighting. Yeah. Uh, Esteban is weddings. Um, there's, um, I think it's a Polish. Photographer, I, I don't even ask me the name. It's no, super, which is uh, no, which <laughs> is good. But that's that's the one thing, uh, you know, that that it's always good to be able to, you know, to 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 look at someone. I I, I can, can you know consistently, you know, look at at different photographers, you know, and 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 see, you. And, and I think that's why social media is such a such a great tool right now. Yeah. Um, just for the fact that you can just find these amazing talents out of nowhere, you know. Whether it could be someone that, you know, because I follow you and you like their stuff, it'll start showing up on my feed and stuff like that. And, and I've discovered so many, like, talented yeah. photographers yeah. that you look and they're like, oh, like, oh, my God, this kid's like 18 years old, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and they're from across the world, you know, and they're doing, you know, stuff that, that, that that's great. Um, so let, let's, you know, um, oh, so there's there's another question actually from Justin. Um you know, how do you keep your, your creative juices flowing? You are a, you're such a busy photographer and you've done it all. Like what seems to show, you know, what gives you that new interest uh, in everything you went like every time you pick up a camera, like how you, to keep, how do you keep creative? Uh, it's a really tough question. <laughs> it is, it is. Because I think that everyone have like their, that moment in, in their career world, they start thinking about, Oh, I'm feeling like like I'm feel this, this stuck. Like I I'm I'm not moving. I'm not being creative. I'm doing the same thing all the time. Uh, but I try to make some pauses. Like I'm try to breathe a little bit sometimes and try to think. Okay, if I'm blocked, what what will be the best thing that I can do in this moment just to to save that moment? So one of the things that worked for me a lot is to see at the opposite way. In, in weddings, actually, uh, something that helped me a lot is to see uh, the opposite side where all the guests are seen. Oh, okay. So basically, if everyone is seen to one side, I try to do the opposite. The angle. opposite side. Just with that, I know that I have a different photo. Yeah. And that's the basic thing that we have to do. We have I, to have a different angle than everyone. Absolutely, I, I completely agree with that. And one of the one of the things when I you know when I was sh shooting weddings all the time. Um, was especially during like you know the father daughter dance, 
Yeah. One thing that I focused on a lot was the dad, because that was the one thing that the bride always missed, especially when it was a very emotional dance. Yeah. And, you know, she's like hugging him the entire time. The one thing that she's missing was his, you reaction. know, his reaction, his expression. So I, I it was something that I that, that I focused very attentively and I got so many, you know, so many things from from brides that were like, thank you so much. You know, that was just something that I never thought about, yeah. you know, and to see my dad, you know, crying or to see his face just, you know, was something. And again, it was just by, like you were saying, focusing on something that somebody else, you know, yeah, the rest uh, of the guests were. I doing. was seeing the work of Victor Marti from Spain, uh -huh. uh, Marco Rojo. He's another photographer that I really, really admire. Uh, and I was seeing the dance photos that you, you were talking about that. And I, I remember her, his work because he, normally we shoot like the, the couple, right? Mm. Their, their, their friends dance, we're, we're shooting only of them, but we forget about the reactions of the people that are behind. So he normally do a lot of photos of the people and the reactions of the people that are seeing the people, the, the, of the okay. couple dancing. And he have so amazing photos of, of the first dance, but not the couple. I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. making myself uh, so, clear. So more, 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 he's, he's more about of what the is guests. happening. Uh, everyone is seeing uh -huh. the couple, but he's not focused on the couple. Oh, he's yeah. well worry about all the things that are surrounding that like moment. The get, like the guests and, and stuff. And he has um, incredible photos about all that. So it's a different way to approach because everyone has the photo of, of them dancing. Yeah. So why he have to have the same photo that everyone have? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was a yeah, nice that's, uh, that's a way good, yeah. of approaching the the, the same the same uh, moment, but he have the real different photo that again that's the work that we have to do. So I learned with that so simple idea. I try. I'm trying to improve that in my in my first dance photos, mm -hmm. and I already have a few that I okay. I can do different stuff, uh, different the, the way I do it normally all the time. So. We'll, That's that that's the small things that you learn uh, exactly. things that change a lot the way you deliver a photo. Yeah. And again, and that goes back to, you know, getting inspiration from outside sources, from people that you admire, from people, exactly. you know, and stuff like that, which is, you know, what we were talking about. So let's let's switch gears a little bit. Let's you know, right now everybody there's so many things, you know, when it comes to AI. I mean, after shoot you know, uh, and such. And we're going to be actually talk a little bit more because I love the way, uh, you know, you use, you, you, you integrate, you know, your post processing and stuff like that in, in, into it. And that's something that, that I do want to get into. So right now when everybody, you know, that everybody's is, is, is like mid journey and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I love it. I'm, I'm yeah, officially too. like Incredible. loving it. Um, I think it's a great tool for photographers. I think it's a great tool for commercial photographers when it comes to, um, I remember, you know, just Speeding doing things. Oh and God, simplify absolutely, things dude. And totally. that, well, he, here's the thing, for example, with doing commercial shoots, you know, um, in, 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 in things that when you're doing anything that, that has to do, you know, with fashion and stuff like that, you know, you have to, when you presented a board, an idea board to different, you know, companies and such, I mean, we had to draw, we had to sketch, we had to cut out, you know, we had to go to and magazines build and build these, exactly. these mood boards and present that over to, where now, you know, by using, you know, things like, like a tool, like mid journey, where you can actually go in there and kind of get set an entire mood and tell it. And now just present that over to a client. Um, but there's right now, I think the industry is kind of in, in like a panic mode uh, from a lot because recently we were, we, you know, I've gone to a couple of, of workshops um, and talking to photographers and, and, you know, and in general where they talked about, you know, they were like, oh man, you know, so this is going to put me out of a job and this and that. And they were looking at it more as a threat as it was more you know, of a tool, the advantage. yeah, uh, of a tool. What do you think about this whole AI, like the current AI movement? Well, it will depend a lot in the way you approach it. Uh, I think it's a great tool. Uh, I think it that you have to understand how you can incorporate that in your work and put it to work on your on, on your on your way and your in your in the, in the way you do your photos. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, I am using it a lot in schools. 
in my portraits. The mid, like Mid Journey? No, not Mid Journey, or? but all the AI tools from Photoshop, for, example, okay. for yeah. example. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm really interested in incorporating more things like Mid Journey for mm -hmm. for my photos because there's a lot of times where the kids come with a really complicated ideas that I would love to do if I have the tools. And just giving the tools because basically I can give them the background, any kind of work, the background that they want, uh, any kind of stuff that they can dream of. So why not? If you're any any way you're doing the photo, any way you're mixing tools, you're mixing. It's like uh, like it's like an artist, you know. You can use any type of technique. This is another technique. It's, it's as simple as that. So it's not replacing the photographer. It's just giving you another tool. So if you if you see it that way, I think you can improve a lot your work and yeah. you can do really cool stuff, and giving more possibilities to your client if you're uh, open minded with that. If you see it as a threat, well, you you're gonna lose. I and I, and and I agree. I, I don't see actually the threat. I, I actually see a new tool. I, I, I really nice. I completely really agree. No, I of completely course, agree maybe the people that. that do backgrounds <laughs> are gonna lose a lot Wait, of work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that I mean, type of stuff. But uh, anyway. It's, it's just another tool you have yeah. to dab like when digital cameras came around uh, everyone was panicked too that is gonna and that was like a, a transition that everyone have to have with all the tools yeah but I think it's gonna bring us really cool stuff yeah. for the future so, I, I, I I agree I think I definitely you know it's definitely definitely a tool I, I I don't think it's going anywhere so you know why fight it you know rather than just you know move you use it as a tool um, you know Jonas Peterson right yeah. Yeah. So have you seen any of his work? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, actually selling yeah, all, all their Exactly. Art. Yeah. And I think I think he had an exhibit in Paris. Yeah. Um, you know, not too long ago. And the entire thing were portraits of these older, older ladies. Older, older, yeah. yeah there, which are which are, and like he's, a very fashion. Exactly. Yeah. And he's he's evolved, which was funny is that he's kept basically the same models. Yeah, and then just just he he's evolved. Changing their moods and yeah. their dresses. I just I just saw one that he posted just recently. You know where it used to be just kind of like upper torso, or whatever. Now he's doing like full, full body, yeah, full body ones. You know, and they're in different settings and stuff like that. Um, and I mean, and Jonah's you know wedding photography is beautiful. You know, he's yeah. he actually lives in Austin now. Really? Yeah. He was not living yeah. uh, in Australia? He, he's Australian. Oh, yeah. He lived in Australia. But yeah, but uh, he's actually in Austin okay, now. Okay, that's new for me. Uh, he travels quite a bit. But yeah, I think he I think he actually moved to Austin right before the pandemic, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. So uh, maybe one of these days, you know, we'll get him over here. Um, mm -hmm. But no, but that was one of the things, you know, he was one of the very first that I saw that was kind of evolving and moving the, the forward to it. The first time I heard about the journey was because of him. Be oh, because the of The first Jonas. image that I see... I wouldn't start asking him of, hey man, how you do that? And he was like super medic with all that idea. And a few weeks later, everyone was doing that. But I, the, the first time I see something uh, do, uh, do on on uh, artificial intelligence uh, was a photo of, of him. That's yeah. why I have that so, 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 so in my vividly, mind, right? yeah. I, that was so vivid. Yeah. No, yeah. And, and like I said, he's, you know, he's got um, anything. Um, Guys, you know, for you guys who who, who are around and, and are watching, if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to send them. We'll definitely uh, answer all of the questions or whatnot with that. So, you know, continuing to talk about about that. I mean, now you have like ChatGPT, which I absolutely love. ChatGPT, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, I use it on the daily for different things in the world. You know, um, but right now. I mean, I think it's the AI kind of like revolution and there's any, you know, for post-processing, you know, I didn't quite hit that, <laughs> you know, uh, it was right kind of like everything kind of started hitting right as I, as, as I was in the tail end of, of my wedding photographer career um, on that part. So I'm not as experienced, you know, with that, but I know you are, I know you use that pretty much for everything. And we were talking about earlier. Yeah, today about, we're doing yeah, some about practice how, with that, yeah. Exactly, and how you know how you use after shoot with, you know, with not only the weddings, but with your school. Yeah. You know, the school work and stuff like that. Um, so in that aspect, you know, has it, has it made, uh, has it changed 
the way basically your business works, your business model totally. when it comes to it? Yeah? Yeah. Our biggest concern was time, all the time, work time. Uh, As in like in, like in, in after, the, after the shoot? Yeah, like after the, post the shoot. Process Normally okay. when we are in a busy, in a busy week mm -hmm. uh, that we are closing all the, all the yearbook project, we have to deal with uh, one or two months with every single day we have photos in one school. One day of shooting will be more or less 2,000 to 3,000 photos per day per school. Sometimes we are at two or at three schools on the same day. So the designers have normally to organize and select the photos of 300, 400 kids per day. They have to select it, they have to edit it, and and they also working on the design of the book. So they have too much work. And it's, that is per day. So they don't even start selecting the photos because they, they can spend one day just selecting, uh, one day or two editing that work, and each day they're receiving that amount of photos. So imagine the congest congestion. Yeah. Congestion. Yeah, are, yeah, yeah, yeah. The amount of work. The amount of work that they have to do. So they are losing a lot of time uh, for the design process, for or incorporating all that to the design of the book. So imagine how this changed for us the work. Uh, again, two to three hundred, uh, three thousand photos per day. Uh, now with the after shoot uh, selecting um, tool, we are doing this process in approxim approximately eight minutes, more or less. Okay. And remember, I was telling you that this selection process can take from anything from six to eight hours per day, uh, each school. So that process is reduced now to 15 minutes and, and you that can- And that was the calling. Yeah, the or, calling, yeah, just calling. the calling. Um, and put a, 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 like a 30 minutes more time for like, just to check that you have everything right. So if we put a lot of time, one hour. But we were talking about six or eight hours of doing the same process, just with the calling. Now with the edit, it's, uh, it's absurd, it's absurd. Uh, you have like 300 photos selected, okay? So you have to now edit all that. Uh, that can be one day of work, if you have, uh, if, you have uh, if you're lucky, one day of work. Uh, now, uh, another 15, 20 minutes, and that's it. So in two hours, they do the work of three days. So multiply that for 16, 17 schools per semester. Mm -hmm. Now you do the math. Yeah. Now, if you if you put that in, in perspective, uh, maybe it's half of the month that you are uh, using that time now to, to talk more with your clients, to do more work on the design process that we were very involved in, uh, to do all the stuff that you are not given the time or the enough time because uh, you were concerned about all this process. So it really works. So yeah. uh, I was telling today, you see all these guys on the on the workshop, I was telling you, this is not a joke. This is real thing. And this is just, this is just with the, the schools. Now, we, if we talk with the weddings, it's the same thing. Yeah, You can have a, a full wedding process uh, of calling and, and edit it in one day. Now the thing with with a lot of these you know a, a lot of these you know software these programs um, that you're doing is it's not that your work is completely gone your exactly. work is not completely gone you have to train you know it's artificial intelligence so you know you're not gonna pop this in and all of a sudden it's magically your images exactly. are gonna look like Cristian Cardona's you exactly. know <laughs> so you have to you know these programs learn you know, according to, you know, your style, whatever, which is what's fantastic about it. Because, you know, one thing that I saw with, with you know, with different programs or when you even sent them out, you know, to companies to edit for you, one, it was that there was never that consistency. Exactly. It, was, it wasn't consistent. It was, a, you know, it was always something that was, you, you know, doing one, ed one, one editor would do it one way and then the next week that editor wasn't available so they send you somebody else and that other one had just an extra little thing and it you know so from wedding to wedding it was always different now with these softwares you have you have something that is consistent, consistent. because they're your edits exactly you know they're your edits and the that's software something is learning uh, each and every time about how exactly. you are working so it's, it's great yeah 
So yeah, and I think that that's that's one of the things that you know it's it's so fantastic nowadays. You know, with with you know these these, and I know you use after shoot religiously, and you know, um, as a matter of fact, we're, we we need to schedule something with Justin to come in here and, and get that. So, um, uh, Sandra, you know, hi, hello, Sandra. Uh, if you have questions or anything, you know, send them over. Um, so, you know. We've been on for an hour or so. It's been just feels like, <laughs> you know, and then and after, you know, a full day of, of, of you teaching and stuff like that. Um, what is what is the the uh, the one the one thing? If you were to go back and talk to Christian Cardona from 10 years ago. What's the one thing that you would that, that you would say? Uh, I have it clear. Uh, I start earlier. I would love to start as a photographer earlier. I start. I feel I start very, uh, not not on the wrong time, but I think that I will love to do it uh, when I was younger. Okay. Because I feel I will do a lot of more stuff, but life works that way, and uh, uh, the, I found photography maybe a little bit later that I I want, but. Photography gave me everything that I have on, on my life. So um, it's, it's a way that things work. So I will only try to, to tell myself, go and do it earlier because I really enjoy what I do. And uh, that gave me a lot of fun stuff like uh, travel to a lot of countries and meet new people and uh, give me uh, uh, the, the tools to give my family a, a good life. So mm. I, I, I can't. Imagine doing another another thing that another career, yeah. yeah. Um, we're gonna start winding out a little bit, but I do want to hear a little bit more outside of photography. Let's talk about that sentence because we're all photographers, you know, and the majority of, the, of of our audience that comes in, they're photographers or they're photography enthusiasts, stuff like that. But there's always a different side from the photography industry, which is something that that most people don't see because everything that we post is most of the time photography related, um, you know, and such. So in, you know, what are, what are the things that you do outside of photography that have nothing to do with schools, with weddings and like, what is, I know, I know you're a Lego maniac. <laughs> yes. You know, I know you I know and you your children. Like I, I was, man, I was. <laughs> Because I've seen some of the stuff. I mean, you you did the Millennium Falcon, don't you? Have the the Millennium yeah. Falcon? You guys did the Millennium Falcon. I've seen some of the ones. <coughs> you know, I, I love Legos, but you guys are at a different level. You know, <laughs> when it comes to it, um, like what uh, what are the things that, that 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 you do outside of 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 photography, like hobbies, stuff like that, that have nothing to do with with uh, with photography? Uh, well, I I. I will uh, from from years from now. I change a lot of, of a lot of stuff that I do. Uh, on my my in my younger years, I was a professional BMX rider. Um, Wait, what? I was a professional BMX rider. I was actually training, really? right, training for. I was training for go to the World Cup and all that. I go that four I times to the World Cup. I was ten on on the top ten of. BMX riders on the world on that time. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I was injured, uh, so I have to leave it. Uh, I was It was super sad because I, uh -huh. that was my life at that moment. Uh, then start playing uh, Ultimate uh, the, uh, Frisbee. Uh -huh. uh, I played like eight years. And again, <laughs> my knees <laughs> my, my knees don't, don't work and resist anymore. So I uh, continue riding bike, uh, like mountain bike, but in a more amateur way. Uh -huh. um, the Lego is uh, something that I do f since I was a kid. My father gave me my first ones uh, when I was like eight years old. And I keep them until now. <laughs> so I, I love uh, the, the Legos, especially the Star Wars uh, sets. Um, I, have, I have more than 3,000 sets. From the small ones to the biggest one, like the, the the one that you see, the, yeah. the Millennium Falcon, 
Um, do you guys have you guys done the 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 ADATs the ATATs? Yeah, you have the we ATAT have, have as three. well, right? <laughs> you have three. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, uh, but this is a, something that I start doing with my kids until they meet the Nintendo games. Uh huh. So they start uh, losing all that love from their Legos. Uh -huh. uh, but I continue doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they uh, they 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 keep building their own their own uh, Mario Bros. Uh, Lego sets. And, yeah. And, Uh, and some some ones from Avengers and something like that, but they they am losing the love from building for the Legos, yeah, more because I'm, they're more concerned now and about uh, their the new switch and switch and all the, that, yeah. yeah, yeah. So everybody, see, I wasn't the only one that was surprised. Everybody's like, what? So everybody <laughs> seems to say, Justin was a was an amateur rollerblader. So hey, you know, but no, dude, I had no idea, which is crazy because my favorite one of my favorite movies of all time is Rad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, and it was it was awesome. They actually he, he was a BMX rider. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was in, in up to now. Like, I absolutely. Oh, I don't that hear movie. that word from yeah from that time. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I absolutely love love that 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 movie. Um, they actually brought it back and they showed it in Austin. Really? Yeah, they showed it in Austin and <laughs> then they 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 re released it. For a short time, and now you can find it on Apple TV and stuff like that. I but, have to search it. Yeah, but for a long time, really you couldn't cool find movie, it. Yeah, yeah, it's a great movie. It's yeah. a fantastic. Movie. I love that movie. It's like it's well, terrible. Well, well, that was a kind of unreal BMX. Uh, yeah, because yeah. that was not the type of the, the tracks that we actually use. Yeah, but the movie was super cool. No, oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> I was like, I was I like Hell Track. Movie, yeah. Remember, it was Hell Track. Yeah, rat. Yeah, so, Hell Track. Yeah, yeah, the Hell Track. You know, I mean, it's, yeah, that's 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 it's a great movie. I, I I'm nerding out just because yeah, well, it's so it fantastic. It was a real B movie, a real jewel of the B movie. Oh yeah, yeah but oh it was absolutely, an incredible movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it kind of became like a cult classic, you know. Yeah, totally. And, you yeah. know. I I had a VHS tape of it. I, <laughs> w I, I went through three of them. Then I had the DVD, and then I lost the DVD. And I have to search for the DVD. And and uh, but now yeah, but now it's 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 out on Apple TV and stuff. I'm you can yeah, it. you can actually you can actually <laughs> buy and download because I have it. Um, so Bad. yeah, so that's oh, that. Yeah, man. I had no idea. Well, that, that's that's awesome, man. That's 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 fantastic. And that's one of the things you know, as 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 photographers, you have to, you know, I don't know. In my opinion, you know, it was always it, it can't always be work, work, work. Absolutely. You know, you have to you have to keep that that mind. You have to you know, you can't always be thinking about that stuff. So having those little hob, you know, hobbies, little things outside. Um, it, to me, one of the things that, that, that I did was I never necessarily always stopped taking photos. But what I did stop doing was actually taking my cameras with me. You know, I'm. Most of the time we have a camera with us, which is our phone, and pretty much all of our travels or anything when we go camping, everything's done with my phone. Yeah. You know, I still like to document that stuff, but to me, you know, it got to the point where the camera was a piece of work and taking it with me all the time was something that I was like, Yeah, you know, it, it, it almost felt like I was like, oh, you know, I'm taking a piece of work with me. The first time I go to Disney World in Orlando, uh. Uh, we were with Stevan the first time he goes to to the parks. He was like six years old, so of course I want to do the best photos possible for for him because yeah. it was the first time he was traveling. So I was bringing this all, all the gear that I bring to a wedding. Basically, uh -huh. I was like with a seventy two hundred with uh, two cameras, uh, all the lenses. Actually, I bring I I I, I think that I bring a, a flash. Imagine bringing a flash to Disney. So I was bringing like I don't I don't know how many pounds of weight. Uh, the first hour I was enjoying the, that stuff. 17 hours later, when you <laughs> were trying to get out of the park, I was dying, man. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, the second time I go with all, with all my kids, I was just with my phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, just, I don't want you to learn. see a camera. You you learn. So, so uh, Sandra asked, like, how old are your kids? Oh, uh, 14 and 11. Four, I have twins. Four, 14 and 11. Holy moly! Yeah, so you have so you have three. Yeah, you have two. You have a set of twins, and yeah. those are, and they're fourteen. No, eleven. That's eleven. And Stephen, the bigger and Stephen, the other ones is is is, is fourteen. Um, do they ride at all? They're, she's asking, do they ride BMX? I mean, oh no, 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 no. They are. <laughs> they actually don't like so much sports that I do. Ah. Uh, uh, Stephen plays volleyball in the school, and my kids, uh, well, really ride bike, <laughs> basically, but they don't. 
Uh, they play basketball in school. Do you ever um, like? Do you ever pull out like pictures of when you were a pro and be like, "Look, yeah, this is me." Well, that was kind of funny because they, I, I was, um, I was trying to get them to to BMX. Uh, so a friend of mine put a, a BMX track actually near our house, and a really really good uh, BMX track. So I said, "This is my opportunity to bring them." So I, I, I uh, for Christmas I buy some really good uh, bikes and I was preparing everything for taking them. So uh, I take and they were riding their bikes and so I I see that they want and I like and they like this. So I was hoping that they will like to see the track and oh uh, I want to start uh, doing BMX. So uh, I take the bikes, I take my kids, we go to the track. And we park just in front of the biggest jump of the of the track, and suddenly a kid hits the w <laughs> the hardest way I ever possibly see in my life. I was uh, uh, riding bike for like 20 years, and I never see a, 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 a hit that hard as that kid. That suddenly uh, an ambulance comes, <laughs> so, oh. and that's the first thing that they see as, B, uh, as a, spec, as a uh, spectator. spectator of BMX. <laughs> so imagine what was this, the following question for for, for me. Uh, do you want us to be part of that? Um, yeah, and that was, that was, that was, it, that was it. They were like, yeah, it. we're out. Yeah. Yeah, we're out. They don't yeah. even touch the track. <laughs> So that was my approach to BMX. Yeah, right well, you know, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, that's, that's. I yeah, tried, at least I tried. <laughs> no, exactly. And, and that's, that's all you can do. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's part of it. Um, so, so yeah, Sandra, no, they, 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 apparently they don't ride, you know, B, no. BMX uh, and stuff like that. Well, Christian, man, thank you so much, man. I know it's been, and, uh, you know, it's, it's been awesome. It's great to have, you know, always, always to have you. Uh, I'm glad that you were able to make it. That we were, uh, you know, we were able to to make this happen. I know you're tired. I know you've been working all day. Uh, you, no, man, yeah, like, it's well, really a pleasure to to be with you and to see how things are going well with with Kikoto. Uh, I'm really thankful, as you know, for being part of the of your team and um, yeah. So uh, uh, so many years uh, when I started uh, for an error to meeting you and now being here sitting and talking with you is. It's great, man. So yeah. thanks for the invitation and absolutely, really appreciate absolutely. It. And you know, you're always you're always welcome. Uh, we had one this year. Uh, we'll plan another one for next year. As yeah. a matter of fact, I think Justin was was saying that you needed to come back to Texas so that he yep. can come to Texas. Well, <laughs> actually, what he said was, when, when are you going to do one in the north? Uh, you know, up north so that he can go. Yeah, and we have uh, actually we talked with Justin and Vero that uh -huh. uh, we have to do a. Uh, uh, Una sesión de, de aniversario de ellos. Anniversary uh, session. Anniversary session. Uh -huh. So I'm going for you guys. <laughs> See, there you go. There, there you go, Justin. I'll, I still think, you know, he should come back to Texas and then you guys come down, you know. So, yep. Justin, we need to get you down here anyways. We need to, you know, <laughs> uh, and stuff like that. But but as always, like I was mentioning, you know, um, you know, thank you so much. Thank you, you know, man. thanks for, for, uh, for, for stopping by. You know, this is always your home. You know, we we are very very happy that you're part of the Gikoto family, um, and 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 again, um, you guys will be seeing a lot more of Christian uh, with 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 some of the stuff. Uh, uh, we got some things coming up that, that that we'll be discussing soon and stuff like that. Um, but for 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 now. You know, we're going to go ahead and, and, and in this one, there's so much you know more that we can talk about for you guys who stayed, uh, you know, who stayed with us up to now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Remember, um, subscribe to the channel, you know, put hit the little bell down at the bottom so you can get uh, notified anytime time that comes in. Uh, like I would mentioned before, uh, there's many more things that we're going to be doing. As a matter of fact, tomorrow we're going to have another special guest. Um, and it's actually going to be our very first female, uh, you know, and tomorrow we will have uh, some tequila tonight. <laughs> we skipped the tequila yeah. just because it's been a they very... Promised me, they promised me tequila. <laughs> I'm still waiting for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but we, we, got, we got some great barbecue. We got great, great oh, barbecue. Yeah. Um, I, I can't complain. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, so was, and we got a little bit too late and we couldn't get the tequila on there but we're gonna do this one again you'll come back i'll promise you i'll have some tequila Thanks so um much. 
tomorrow we will have we'll, ha we'll have a, a, a tequila and we have a very very special guest tomorrow we will have Barbara Torres that's going to be here um, doing this and we will do that one at 5 o'clock tomorrow so you guys be ready um, she said that she's going to out drink Esteban and Sean Lara <laughs> so tomorrow I'm actually going to bring it in and, and I have it so we'll see that's a lot of that's some big big words you know uh, that it came in so we'll see but tomorrow five o'clock we'll have Barbara Torres uh, with here for now like I said thank you so much make sure you guys subscribe hit that bell um, and we will see you guys tomorrow so with all that anything else Christian that you want to no. you want to add thanks so much for being here thanks for the invitation and hope to to return uh Really early, really, really soon. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We'll we'll start thinking for 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 the next one that, that yeah, we'll be. Sorry doing for here. the Spanglish. So now we'll be good. <laughs> um, uh, but again, thank you, thank you uh, so much for for being here, um, and we will see you guys very very soon. So thank you guys for watching.